Hello guys and welcome to Program Harvest. Today we're going to talk about API gateways. Let's describe a case of an application that we want to build. So we want to build an ice cream application. Application that will allow us to order some ice cream from a bunch of places. So we will have the internet, okay, which will be ordering the, the ice creams and we will have the us, the our servers that will allow the, the ice cream to be ordered. We will have a few clients that will be able to order the ice cream. We will have Android apps, we will have the iPhones, the Apple phones, we will have the web applications and we will have a CLI, we will publish a CLI. You can imagine some programmer sits in front of his computer and uh, orders from the command line and the ice cream. So as you can see, we have a lot of applications, okay, four uh, types of applications and in each application we have uh, num numerous clients of the same application. Now from our side of the, of the application, we'll have a few services, a payment service, okay, that's a credit card, an order registration service that will register every order that comes, an emailing service that will uh, send emails for the people who orders, ordered the ice creams. An Android notification service that will send notifications to the orders that came from the Android apps. And uh, an Apple notification service that will send notifications to orders that came from the Apple devices. Now, what should happen when uh, someone orders an ice cream? So. Uh, doesn't matter where he orders it from. Few things that should happen are first thing, the order should be registered. After it is registered, it should be paid for. Okay, and after it is paid for, we will send them an email. And if the orders came from some kind of application on Android or Apple, we will send notification to the device that the order came from. Okay, so it seems pretty legit, pretty simple. What should happen? There is a question now. Where should the logic be? This logic that orchestrates and combines all our backend services uh, and creates this one flow of uh, logic. Well, you may argue that this logic should, uh, should be inside the client, okay? Inside the client that orders the ice cream. So, what does it mean? First of all, it means duplication of code. It means that every type of client that can be written in different languages, okay? Uh, it should have this logic. So we'll, we will have four instances of the same logic that orders our uh, ice cream. Also, we will have duplication of configurations. What does it mean? It means that, uh, well, our services, they are exposed through some kind of a static IP or a DNS name, and each of these clients should be uh, configured with those endpoints. So we'll have the configuration of all these endpoints, all these services in each and every client. And we have here only five services and you can easily think of your case uh, with, in your application and think how many services you have in your uh, application and how many configurations you should be duplicating now. Another duplication that we have is the API, API duplication. Every one of these services exposes some kind of API, okay? So, uh, when the API is exposed, those, those uh, services, those applications, uh, they need to use it. So, in order for them to use it, they need to know the, the API. So, if we have some kind of uh, endpoint exposed in the emailing service, every one of those needs to know it and use it. Okay, so it is an API usage duplication. And this duplication comes in every single service that we have. So if, for example, we have 10 services, then it means that 10 APIs, the usage of them is duplicated with all of our clients. Now, what, what will happen if we will change, for example, the emailing service API, and now we will want uh, some other parameters uh, to send the email, like, for example, we will want the email address. We, want, we, for example, wanted only the email address and we sent some general uh, message that said 
uh, you have ordered an ice cream, uh, congratulations. And now we want to, uh, to be able to uh, send the email more, uh, uh, more precisely with more accurate information about what ice cream you ordered and what's the name of the person who ordered it. So now we want to receive uh, also a name of the order, of the one who ordered the, uh, the ice cream and uh, the type of ice cream he ordered. So now each and every client, each and every type of client, okay, should be, should update this uh, information. Now some of them we control like our Android apps, our Apple apps, our web apps, but the CLI for example is something that we released, we gave to the clients and now they use some kind, some ver version of this uh, CLI uh, and uh, now, well, we don't control it. So now we uh, need to support two versions of this here, okay, in the service of the mailing, of the mailing service uh, and we need to support uh, different versions uh, of the API, the old API and the new API. Another problem arises is what if, for example, some notification service here, okay, emailing uh, Android or Apple is asynchronous. What does it mean? It means that, well, it is written in a way that when you send an, uh, uh, a request to notify something, to send an email, it gives you an OK status immediately and gives you some kind of ID that you need to uh, to check it every few seconds and to to know if their notification already been sent. For example, it registers it in some kind of queue and you need to check whether your ID in that queue is already been taken care of or it is still sitting in the queue because of, uh, I don't know, some uh, huge load of uh, ice cream ordering because it's a hot day. So now your uh, order sits in some kind of queue and you need to Check it so every single client, okay, every single type of client needs to do this logic, which is not too complicated, but uh, it is not simple and you need to implement it four times in four different languages. And a final thing what if, for example, for some reason you only want to allow uh, some VIP members of your, uh, of your application to order some special. Uh, ice cream flavors. For example, you have some amazing uh, uh, ice cream flavor, well, I don't know, uh, pancake. Okay, we'll have a pancake ice cream, uh, which tastes like pancake. Uh, so you only want to allow a VIP member to order this uh, ice cream. So what you need to do is to implement in some of the services, probably not all of them, but some of the services, some kind of logic that uh, checks who's that user and verifies that he's a VIP user and or that he reached some kind of points. It can be a complicated logic that uh, allows some users to get some stuff and it will be probably implemented in few services, not only the registering service, but I don't know, for example, in a payment service because you don't want someone to pay for something that he will not receive. Uh, okay. And maybe you will implement some kind of special logic that sends different type of mails to VIP users and not to VIP users. For example, if it's a VIP user, it means that he orders a lot. So you will want to uh, send him some kind of special email that uh, promotes some other stuff that he will probably buy because he buys a lot from you. So the mail that he'll receive is different from the mail that some new uh, customer receives. For example, for new customers, you will send uh, some uh, mail that uh, explains uh, what cool stuff he can get here, basic stuff, okay, that will uh, attract him to buy more from your uh, store. So you can see that every single service, well, most of the services will need some kind of logic to identify the type of the user. Uh, so now you have the, this logic duplicated in each and every type of service on this side. These are only a few things that, uh, that can go wrong when you uh, when you do direct communication and you put the logic, the ordering logic, inside the client. Solution number two that we're going to talk about is actually the API gateway. So this is an API gateway, okay? It's just a square, nothing else, just kidding. So it's a service and it can be load balanced, okay? Not only one instance, it can be, uh, there can be a lot of instances of it. It is a single point of entrance 
for all your types of clients. Every single client that wants to order ice cream, it requests from the API gateway, please order me an ice cream. But it is not a proxy. What I mean by this, it's, it's not just like uh, receiving a request, I want to pay for something and uh, puts it in, uh, sends it to the payment service. It does more than that. It actually receives from every single client. Okay, it receives a uh, order me ice cream. My name is A, my email is B, and I'm ordering the ice cream C, and here are my credit details, credit card details. And now all the logic of the ordering, of the orchestration of all of these services sits in one single place. So what does it mean? Well, first of all, our clients get much, much simpler. All they need to know is to call this single point of entrance and to simply request order me ice cream. They do not need to know how this process is done. They do not need to know how many services are behind these tasks and they do not need to know which, what is the order of uh, uh, the services that needs to be called. For example, we don't, it, it doesn't need to know uh, that there is a different service for registration and payment and that you need to first call the registration service and then the payment service. It's transparent to them. Okay, so all the, the logic sits in this, this area and now he knows a few things. He knows what's the logic that needs to, be, to happen in order to order this ice cream, the order of these services, uh, the configuration. Okay, now we don't have duplication of code. It sits only in this service. We don't have duplication of configuration for all of the services. Well, we have a little small duplication of, conf uh, of uh, configuration, but it is only for this single service. And it is much better than duplicating the configuration on all of the services. Now, if, for example, this emailing service or notification service are async, now this uh, complicated code sits only in one place, written in only one language, it doesn't have duplications. So if, for example, we have a bug there, we fix it once and we control how it is fixed. Moreover, uh, if, for example, the emailing service is now changing the API, as we talked before, it uh, wants to send uh, the mail with more specific data. Uh, now, uh, we, want, we will have uh, no problem implementing it in a new service and we will have two services of mailing, the old one, Okay, that is, for example, deprecated. We don't, we support it for now, but we don't uh, implement more new stuff there. And we will have a new emailing service with uh, more capabilities. And the API gateway will receive a request and it will know from the version, for example, of the CLI, if it is an old version, it will, it will navigate in the request to the new mailings, uh, to the old mailing service. And it, if, if it is a new API, uh, if it is a new CLI version, it will navigate the request to the new mailing service. Okay, so now uh, the client won't need to change. We won't need to support uh, multiple versions for each and every service. We'll have simple logic in, the, uh, in each of these services and we will have probably different versions of each and every service and the navigation to the versions will be in one place. <clears throat> and it simplifies the duplication of the management of versions. Okay, we have only one place that manages the versions. Also, what it does, it uh, gives us the opportunity to check uh, the user, okay, if it is a VIP user of, or if it has a lot of points, he orders a lot, and uh, we can check it from here. And now with this information, we can send it directly to the services. So now the logic of the services are, is much simpler. They don't need to know what makes a user special, what makes a user a VAP member or uh, other stuff. They simply need to know whether they should send some uh, mail of type A or some mail from type B, or they should register it as an order from type A user or type B user. And the type, the, uh, the checks of the type of the user are uh, implemented in one place, <coughs> meaning it's a simple Boolean uh, 
uh, if if the user is type of A, do something. If the user is type of B, do something else. And the uh, API gateway is the one who is responsible for uh, checking what type of user it is. So as you can see, uh, it simplifies a lot of our clients. It simplifies a lot of our servers. What it basically does, it receives an order, checks what type of user it is, and orchestrates each and every service uh, depending on the type of the user. If it's a VIP user, if it is a, a an Android, an Apple user, okay, or web app or the CLI user, and uh, by the type of the user, he sends it to the relevant services with the relevant information. A few other good stuff that uh, API Gateway allows us to do. First of all, it allows us to migrate from monolith backend server to microservices. Okay, so the idea behind it is when you have a monolith uh, service in the backend, one single point uh, that every client uh, sends information to it and requests uh, data from it, what you can do is hide it behind an API Gateway and now you can separate this monolith in few uh, in more services in more microservices and it will be transparent to the clients for the uh, for your application for for your web app or i don't know android app it will be transparent you don't have to change it uh, all the changes will be done in the api gateway now instead of uh, sending requests to the single monolith server it will send it to uh, two three four services Every time you separate uh, mon the monolith server, you take a chunk from it. Now you update the API gateway to send uh, the request to different uh, services. And now you can easily separate the monolith to microservices. It can also help you uh, do a blue-green deployment. What do I mean by this? Uh, you can deploy... Uh, the in well, you have a production version that runs already. Now you can deploy a new version, test it, and when you are ready to test it, you can change the API Gateway configuration to, uh, to navigate the requests to the new version. And you can even do it with uh, some logic that, uh, that checks if the request that the API Gateway gets is a request that's related to the uh, already running request, it's not a new request. You can navigate it to the old services because you want to to manage some state with the old services you want to complete this single request with the old version and after all the requests are done with the old version uh, and all the new requests are now going to the new version you can simply uh, pull down the older version and now you have only one version and you can uh, much simpler do a b testing and canary releases what i mean by this you can deploy multiple versions at the same time okay to check some a b tests to check if the user uh, likes some new feature or will use it, you can deploy this specific version uh, and you can navigate, I don't know, 5% of the users or some country or I don't know, in some hours, the, all the users if, that request for some specific data to the uh, new services and see how they behave, how they behave with the load, uh, whether the user likes the new, uh, the new feature that you added and different stuff so you have multiple versions and the API gateway navigates in the traffic uh, of the requests to different versions depending on your logic that you wrote with. You have watched an episode about API gateway. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more architecture videos by clicking over here or you can trust YouTube to know what you really want to see and click over here. If you want to watch more coordinated videos check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on Chrome Artist.